A lot of people make a fuss about what happens in beer temperature during fermentation, but not a lot of people are talking about what happens after fermentation. So today I'm gonna to run down the proper serving, storing, and cellaring temperatures for all your beers, and that's really important for how they mature and how they taste when you actually get them into your glass. So let's start away at serving temperatures for different styles of beer, and then we'll work our way backwards through storage and cellaring temperatures. Uh, but before we get into all of that, I did get this fridge for that exact purpose. I reached out to them because it's a really awesome fridge and it comes in at a great price point. So they sent it to me. Uh, this is from New Air and all the links to this will be in the description below. And we're gonna put that aside for now because I'm gonna start with your crispy boys, which honestly, I'm just gonna be throwing in my, my main fridge at home that sits between 32 and 36 to 38 degrees. By crispy boys, I mean your, your light lagers. Sometimes your IPAs, if they're mass produced IPAs, although hazies, I'll serve a little bit warmer. Uh, but Vienna lagers, anything that you want to be bright and crisp, I'm probably just gonna throw in my main fridge because it's gonna be that 32 to 38 degree temperature range for serving. And the reason behind that is it's going to brighten up and crisp the beer profile. So if you're conceptualizing what beers you wanna be serving at that 32 to 38 degrees, those are the beers that you want to be bright and crisp and super refreshing. And especially beers that you're not considering at all the aromatics. And so some West Coast IPAs might kind of fall into that category. Before we go into storage and cellaring, here's a quick diagram of all the different temperatures that you're gonna to wanna to serve different styles of beers at. If you need to pause the screen real quick to make sure you can capture all these, feel free to do that. But let's go on to storage temperatures. Now, when you get into beers that have a little bit more aromatic component, but still want to be relatively bright and fresh, uh, that's gonna be maybe your New England style IPAs. That's going to be some Saisons. Uh, if you're doing a, uh, a German style wheat beer or a Hefeweizen as compared to an American style wheat beer, those beers that have aromatics that go with them, those are the ones that you're gonna wanna start serving a little bit warmer. So those beers that have those aromatic components are the ones that you're going to want to be serving between 38 and let's say 45 degrees. But there are beers that actually taste really, really good if you serve them even warmer than that. So those are most often gonna be your barrel aged beers, your high alcohol beers, uh, your beers where alcohol sensation kind of needs to come along with the beer to make the whole picture come into focus. And those are gonna be served between 45 degrees and 55 degrees. And that's gonna be the same temperature that you're going to start cellaring at. The reason being, if you store those beers too cold, then they can start to crisp up and brighten up, which can be appropriate for certain styles, but it's also gonna drop out a lot of flavor producing compounds. If all your flavor stuffs drop out, you are gonna make a crispy boy, a nice light lager, but hopefully you're taking care of all that when it comes to the actual production of the beer. So it really shouldn't be something you're too worried about when it comes to your actual fridge storage space. And again, if it is, that's gonna be something you can throw a bottle in your actual fridge, your stand up fridge at home, and it's gonna take care of all that by itself. All the rest of the beers, if you want them to age appropriately and not gain extra fruitiness, then that standard 45 to 55 degrees is a really good storage temperature. Now let's hear the kind of person that they store all their beers after they're done brewing it in you know, either in kegs or in bottles and you just have a spot in your basement that you store it at and that's 65, maybe 70 degrees. The reason that's not gonna be really beneficial for your beer is no matter what the style, it's going to exaggerate a lot of fruity flavors that the beer could naturally produce. And for most of the styles, that's gonna be inappropriate. Okay, so next, next let's talk about cellaring. And cellaring is a process where you want your beer to actually age and have certain yeast activity that helps develop the beer over time. This is gonna be very, very important with anything that has Brett in it, a lot of your sours, um, big boozy barrel aged beers. Uh, pretty much anything over 7% alcohol. Uh, these are beers that are going to get better at that three month mark or maybe the six month mark or even a year and beyond. And those are the ones that you really want to be cellaring at temperatures where active live yeasts are still doing their thing. And that's going to be that 48 to 55 degree range. For most beers, that's not going to be um, too cold to really drop out the yeast activity altogether, but that yeast will be acting very, very slow and your beer is still gonna be super, super preserved. And so, for me, I got this because I wanted to have the bottom half for cellaring specifically and the top half for serving. Now, when I talk a little bit more about what we're gonna be using this fridge for, let's go into some sexy B-roll showing you all the bits and bobs. Bow, 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 bow. So I got this fridge from New Air because it is dual zone and they've got a bunch of different dual zone ones. This one's pretty inexpensive relative to a lot of other things that I've seen at hardware stores and like Best Buy and stuff like that. And it's just a really awesome fridge. So uh, on the bottom half here, uh, I got it because that's gonna be my cellaring half. And you can see I've already got a couple of beers on there. Um, those are the beers that I wanna continue to mature. And so I'm setting that bottom half to about 48 degrees. If they were live beers that I homebrewed, I'd probably set them a little bit higher, maybe 52. And then the top half is where I'm gonna store all my beers that I want to have that flavorful aromatic punch. So the top half is where I'm gonna be storing all my beers that are you know, in that 
38 to 44 degree temperature range, and I'm probably just gonna set this to 40. I think that's a good average. And uh, if my beer needs to warm up after I pour it into the glass, it can totally do that. You can see this fridge is not only very functional, but super sexy. So it's gonna go really, really good in my downstairs bar at home. So for reference, here's the price that you'll find this fridge online on New Air's website. So while we're closing out, Ryan's probably gonna throw us a couple more stats over what is the proper cellaring or long-term aging temperature for different styles of beer. Uh, but if you've got any questions on that, please leave them in the, the commenty area that's below this video. Um, links to this are gonna be in the description below. Uh, I've got some cool ideas to do with it, so I, I hope you guys are excited about this as much as I am. Um, thanks for watching and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you wanna watch us not do anything beer related or brewing related, subscribe to our second channel. Gina Snap Brewing. It's gonna involve like lobsters and, well, I guess sometimes brewing challenges. A lot of stuff, it's pretty fun. Um, our Instagram is really cool. Um, we have a TikTok. Uh, we've got a, a, a podcast. We've got a, a Discord. And that's all, that's all the things. Um, let us know how we can please you better. Cause that's what we're about. We're just people pleasers. So uh, thanks and uh, if you, if you, if you want to, at the very end of this, you can send a high five emoji to Ryan's personal email. <laughs>